a very warm good morning to everyone so we will start our webinar sharp at 11 am and thank you for your patience kindly wait for 5 minutes thank you for your patience Good morning, Father. Can we start? Good morning. Yes, sir. Arvind, sir, are you here? Yes, I have joined early. I'm ready. So I'm here. Arvind sir, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. So, a very warm good morning to everyone present here. On behalf of Assam Don Bosco University, I take this opportunity to welcome all our guests and participants to this webinar on the much needed topic of the time, importance of biology and life sciences in engineering. As far as latest uh, AICT curriculum, biology and life sciences are in included in all branches of engineering as a mandatory subject. Through this webinar, we will try to give a little effort to enlighten the participants with the importance of biological concepts and its application in engineering. Today, we have the privilege to have with us Dr. Arvind Deshmukh as a chief guest who is a professor and head of the Department of Microbiology, Dr. Bawa Sahib Ambedkar uh, Maradhara University, and a speaker, uh, Dr. Sanjeev D. Patankar, retired principal come president of uh, Microbiologist Society, Maharashtra and Goa Unit. Now I would uh, like to invite Father uh, Stephen Mavali, Vice Chancellor of Assam Donbokstro University, to address the gathering. So over to you, Father. Thank you, Sajeev. Let me start by wishing every one of you a very warm well, good morning. 
and a very warm welcome to Don Bosco University once again, as you've been already welcomed. Needless to say, that I am delighted that this webinar on the importance of biology and life sciences in engineering has been planned by our Department of Basic Sciences in the School of Technology uh, to highlight what is becoming increasingly obvious, that in the world of science today, there are no watertight compartments. Indeed, everything is interdisciplinary, and the world of science, our world, is the better for it. Uh, it. There was already a reference made to AICT recognizing this change, but this change has been in the making for quite some time now. I remember vividly when I tried to introduce an interdisciplinary subject in St. Anthony's College in the early 90s, the move was met with stiff resistance. Nonetheless, we went ahead and we were the first college in the country at that time to introduce an undergraduate course in biotechnology that cut across several disciplines. Today, almost 30 years later, it is still one of the most sought after courses in the college. Today, the scenario has changed tremendously. Today, the knowledge economy and the fourth industrial revolution the fourth industrial revolution led by artificial intelligence, deep learning or machine learning, robotization, intelligence systems in manufacturing. All these together presage what some things have called move to bioinformational society. And there is taking place in particular a new techno science synergy, convergent technologies, it is called referred to sometimes as nano bio info cogno paradigm and that represents a big jump to a new stage of knowledge economy convergent technologies which enable each other and propel a vision of a science-based future have an accelerating impact and exercise a determining direction on economic and cultural developments in this bioinformational society that is become, becoming largely a part and parcel of our life today. It comprises briefly nano, the branch of technology that deals with dimensions and tolerances of less than 100 nanometers, especially in the manipulation of in the individual atoms and molecules. Bio, what we are concerned with today, the exploitation of biological processes for industrial and other purposes, especially in the genetic manipulation of microorganisms for the production of antibiotics, hormones, vaccines, etc., just as we are engaged in today. Info, new information technologies with the, with the development of quantum computing and cogno, where the real convergence takes place of nano, bio, and IT for remote brain sensing and mind control. This is what is taking place all over the world today. These convergent technologies are also referred to as NBIC technologies. It is still to be seen whether they will lead to augmented intelligence uh, functioning autonomously or rather somewhat autonomous learning systems resulting in a hybrid model with human beings firmly in control. Or they will leave us much as before with all this talk about artificial intelligence and intelligence systems as just another tech hype, tech hype type of discourse that will erode, but also create some jobs in the process. Both these are possibilities, both these are possibilities that can take place in the very near future in our own lives. We are indeed fortunate to be living right through these transitions. We are the owners, the makers, as well as the victims too of this phenomenal change in perceptions, in responses, and in the struggle to come out winners. The ultimate destination seems to be the creation of this bioinformational society that increasingly adopts and benefits by this convergence of technologies, indeed convergence of sciences. There is a growing agreement now as pointed out one uh, one of the as pointed out in a book by Duan Elgin written just last year at the height of the grip of the pandemic the title of the book choosing the earth 
humanity's great transition to a mature planetary civilization. That's the name of the book. He says that we are right in the midst of a critical time or transition now. We don't need great intelligence to recognize that. He also says, which I consider to be very important, he says it might help to put things into perspective by looking at some prescient analysis that the great historian Arnold Toynbee made about times of transition in the history of human civilization. Toynbee, after analyzing the dynamics of development of all major civilizations throughout history, he concluded that a civilization will begin to disintegrate when it loses its capacity to respond creatively to major challenges. We are right in the midst of one such major challenge. Toynbee also concluded that a failure of creat creativity often follows a period of great achievement. And, in the, uh, and quoting Toynbee, Elgin says, after acquiring a self-image of seemingly invisible mastery, many developed nations find themselves in the demoralizing position of being unable to manage their own affairs, let alone cope creatively with mounting global problems. That's the situation in much of the world today, not only in the developed and industrial nation, but also in our own country today with this second wave of the pandemic. In a telling and humorous commentary on that book, Dr. Vandana Shiva, she is an Indian scholar and an environmental activist. She says, at a time when billionaires are preparing to escape from the earth through SpaceX, assuming that extinction is in in inevitable, we as humans have the potential to sow the seeds of a planetary civilization as members of the earth community, not as members of this or that race or this or that country, or this or that class. A globalized world does not anymore have the choice to build and fortify secure islands of plenty and comfort for a select few, select nations, select class classes within those nations. It is evident now that that choice is no more the privilege of a few. And it's interesting again, uh, um, reminiscent of what Arnold Toynbee said, what colonization, industrialization, slavery, climate change, religious fundamentalism, political ideologies, and the ravages of war, what all these things have not achieved, the current pandemic has managed to highlight. In the words of one of the well-known poets of our own state, Assam, Bhupan Hazariga, there is today a much more growing realization that we are in the same boat, brothers. And what's the solution? Embracing a bioinformational society? Adopting convergent technologies? Well, the next few years will tell. But for now, I'm sure the speakers from, uh, from the Microbiology Society will have much to tell us about these developments, and more importantly, on our hopes for the future through these convergent technologies that we cannot avoid anymore. Let me thank the organizers, the Department of Basic Sciences, Professor Kalita, the director of the School of Technology, and all of you who have got together in order to organize this webinar today. And let me conclude by welcoming once again, Dr. A.M. Deshmukh and Dr. Sanjeev Patanga from the Microbiology Society of India. We do look forward to an interesting and enriching session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father, for your kind words. your kind words. Uh, now I request our chief guest, Dr. Arvind Deshmukh, to give a brief inaugural talk. Uh, over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for calling me here in this very beautiful event. As already Honorable Dr. Stephen has told, the need of the biology in engineering and really now no field can be separated for the research for the study from each other as in the microbiology we say that 
there is a MBA in bio business. Meaning is that now the business cannot be separated from biology. There is a bioeconomics. There is a bioinformation. And there are many things which are closely related with the biology. And in the same manner, bioengineering is there. Now the engineering student must know the enough knowledge of biology to do the research or to do the innovations. Again, I will say in the fermentation technology, it is a combination of biology and engineering. Without that, we cannot design fermenter, we cannot improve fermenter. Same thing is there again in the waste treatment because the pollution is the major problem nowadays world is facing and the sustainable solution for the waste treatment is only life science life science and life science so when we want to treat the liquid or solid waste the waste treatment design of waste treatment plant oxidation plant activated sludge and many other things etp if you are treatment plan require combination of engineers and biologists or specifically i will say microbiologist so biomathematics biostatistic i i studied mathematics in biology in singapore it is badly needed in biology. And now the new opening again, as Honorable Dr. Stephen has told, bio nanoscience is also one of the opening. Artificial intelligence in biology, you see. Now there is a tremendous scope for artificial intelligence. In 1901, Swami Vivekananda in USA told that the time will come when I will be speaking from USA and you will be listening from India. Now, we are not only listening, we are watching. Today, you see, today is a very beautiful event that I am talking from Maharashtra, one corner of Maharashtra. Dr. Patankar is talking from another corner of Maharashtra. Many attendees are from different parts of India and organizers are from Assam. That is the beauty of science. In the same manner, if engineers and biologists work hand by hand, definitely the miracle will happen. And I believe that India is a country of talent student. I strongly believe because I have visited more than 30, 40 countries. Everywhere I found Indian talent is working in these countries. Everyone is crying for the brain drain in India. But I am always laughing and telling why brain drain is there. Because there is a brain in India. So that's why the drain problem is. And really, microbiology society believes that there is a talent in India, there is a brain in India. We must try to exploit the young generation and their brain for making India. Our honorable Prime Minister is always making appeal, make in India. Make in India is possible only then and then in biology and engineering faculty talent will come together will work together and that's why i take a chance to congratulate the don bosco university their team including the uh, head of department including devashri ma'am because devashri was continuously in touch with me and all other faculty of microbiology and management director, everyone 
in the university because sir you are responsible to create good academic environment that's why the faculty in your university could work voluntarily enthusiastically and today is the result of this work, this team work as a president of microbiology society it's my duty to wish all the best not only wishing today on this occasion i give a promise as a president of microbiology society now many more national international event will organize we are with you not only academically but also financial support also microbiology society will give in the future today's speaker is a dr patanka a very active person very learned person in the subject definitely he will enlighten all the attendee the need of biology or microbiology in engineering i request everyone to listen him carefully and in the future if you are having any doubt you can go on google search for microbiologist society you will get address and our work we have worked throughout we are working throughout the india we have supplied more than 1000 microbiology student students in covid lab every year we are organizing international conference out of india more than 10000 students are in touch with microbiology society so many many duties many work we are doing and we are doing and today i am which is a very happy moment for us one of the active institute from assam is collaborating with us thank you sir thank you dr stephen sir thank you team thank you all for this event thank you all. thank you so much sir for your enlightening speech now i request our speaker dr sanjeev di patankar to enlighten the audience with his uh, previous words over to you sir good morning to all of you am i audible yes sir yes sir yeah am i audible yes sir yes sir yes okay okay so good morning to one and all uh vice chancellor of assam dan bosco university uh, dr stephen mavli organizers of this webinar uh, dr am deshmukh sir president microbiology society india <coughs> at the out outset i am very much thankful to organizers for giving me a chance to speak and invited me as a speaker for such a different type of webinar that is biology in engineering or importance of biology or life sciences in engineering because this is what this is the first ly or this is the this is a kind of seminar which is or webinar which is firstly organized as such in the country according to my knowledge so for that i congratulate the organizers and uh, uh, stephen mauli sir uh, for uh, giving such such type of the opportunity and organizing such type of the webinar uh, rightly uh, the dr stephen mavli said uh, the importance of biology and importance of uh, life sciences as such and the interdisciplinary approach for the overall development and the sus sustainable development with this particular view the aicte they have introduced the module on biology as such in the engineering subject so uh, now why uh, this particular thing it is required what are the uh, problems what are the questions what are the doubts in the mind of students and the faculty members so how it is related how the biology is related to engineering why there is a necessity that engineers must take the course of biology so all we are going to uh, uh, discuss in the forthcoming discussion so uh, with this uh, I, i i start my presentation as such uh, i present now and uh, be with me for a short while so
so is it visible yes sir yes sir hello yes sir yeah, yeah. so this is what this is the biology in engineering uh now <clears throat> this biology in engineering why this why this particular webinar it has been organized and why the sir. ai city hello yes sir yes carry on sir hello any problem no sir no sir carry on sir so why ai city has introduced this particular module in the engineering uh, in the engineering field as such for the uh, study now uh, we have to go for the our uh, we have to go for our education system which has been introduced in 1977 in 1977 the education system it has been it has been changed and there uh, the 10 plus 2 plus 3 system it has been introduced so this particular system it has been introduced for what for the vocationalization of the indian education and this particular type of the uh, uh, thought it has come in the mind of the education commission uh, which was headed by uh, dr d s kothari the professor of physics he was a professor of physics uh, it was born in the mind of dr uh, kothari in 1964 to 66 and it uh, the plan and the uh, uh, entire education system it had changed in 1977 what does all of you know that the 10 plus 2 plus 3 system it was introduced in what in the 1977 initially it was having the <clears throat> all the subject that is what they are compulsory they they were compulsory as such for what for they are compulsory up to the 10 that is the languages including english local language social sciences science physics chemistry mathematics and biology were compulsory and then the uh, division of branches or the student he was uh, they, they were able to take their uh, branches after 11 so in the 11 there is a bifurcation or the trifurcation you can say that in the arts commerce and science and if you talk about the science student the science student they had to uh, they had to take the all subjects that is what that is uh, physics chemistry mathematics and biology so because of that after the 12th they could opt for either engineering medical or any other subject which is related to either material science or the life science for example the ecm bsc with physics chemistry mathematics or bsc with zoology chemistry and biology or microbiology or whatever it may be so this was what this was the start in the 1977 now <clears throat> i would like to uh, uh, i would like to take you till back of the 1977 what was the system there the system was totally different it was a system where in the 8th class or after 8th class there was a bifurcation or the trifurcation of what of the students in the three streams that is what that is arts commerce and science and the science student again they they could opt for what for the physics chemistry and mathematics and physics chemistry and biology so the life science and mathematical sciences they were separate they were going to separate from what from the eighth standard itself so after eighth standard the there is a complete disconnect between what between the two between the two branches that is the students who were opting for the mathematics they were disconnected with what with the biology and the biology students they were disconnected with the mathematics after the 10 so again there were different systems for example in maharashtra if i if i talk after 10 matric those who are opting for what for the life sciences they had to go for pre university exam bsc part 1 and then they could go for mbbs or the other type of the things that is what i think they could carry out uh, carry forward for the bsc and then they were getting the uh, degree so uh, and the uh, and for the uh, mathematical students they were getting the higher secondary school certificate examination that is 11 and after 11 they could enter into the engineering stream or they could continue with what with the uh, physics chemistry mathematics for, for their graduation that is the bsc so uh, there was a complete disconnect now what happened now this was what this was the situation before 77 after 77 there is what 10 plus 2 plus 3 system it was given and 
after 79 again there was a change in what in the 10 plus 2 plus 3 system there is a minor modification it has been given so what was that modification the modification was that they they were having what so after <clears throat> after 10 student of the science could leave either biology or mathematics and could opt for electronics that is a subject related to what related to engineering in place of biology or a paramedical subject to leave what to leave the mathematics as such so this particular type of the modification was given in the 10 plus 2 plus 3 system so uh, what was happening after 10 the science student it was divided into the two compartments that is what the engineering subjects and the medical subjects now why this thing it was given because it was thought by the authorities that Goal of vocationalization of the uh, of, of the uh, education, it is not completely fulfilled. So, in uh, in order to give the complete vocationalization, this particular pattern it was introduced. And now there are three patterns. There are what are the three options are there in front of what in front of the uh, students of the science. That is what they can opt for. Uh, uh, in the eleven, they can opt for physics, chemistry, mathematics, and electronics, or such type of the any engineering type of the subject. Or they can go for the paramedical subject, leaving what leaving the mathematics. So this is what uh, one modification. Or either the students may continue with what with physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology as a core subject as such. So uh, because of such modification, uh, certain type of the effects were there. The positive effects and the negative effects were given. So what were the positive effects? The students could choose the branch or the subject of their own interest, more focused study, no burden of study of the subject of non-interest, then professional subjects could be selected more easily after the 12. The negative effect was that the total disconnect from the core subjects of science and that is mathematics or biology, that is the students who were opting for the electronics, they were disconnected from the life sciences, students who were opting for the paramedical and biology, they are, they are disconnected from the mathematics. So it has given the total compartmentalization of the two subjects among the students and the faculties also. Problems in advanced and higher studies where the interdisciplinary was expected, so that was hampered. Interdisciplinary research and development could not progress. Innovative products less developed. So these were what, these were the negative effects. So here, now, <clears throat> again, the, there is a rethinking over this because we want now the interfacing of what of the different technologies together, different subjects together, and interdisciplinary approach we need. So AICT introduced this particular type of the biology course in what in the engineering. But still there are questions in the mind of student and the faculty members. The question may be like this: Why biology for engineers? Do engineers need biology? How biology is related to engineering? What are the important applications of biology in engineering? So we had to give the answers for this. And then during the discussion, when we, we go for giving answers to this question, it will become more and more clear why the AICT has introduced the biology and engineering and how they are correlated with each other and how it is necessity of the time. So the very first thing it is what the two engineers need biology now it is said that this century it is what it is the century of biology in the context of advancement and contributions a better understanding of biology is expected to lead the revolutionary technologies and products many engineers are expected to contribute biological aspects to fuel this revolution so Previously, there was an industrial revolution that has occurred. Now, this is what this is the technology or the biotechnology revolution it is going to come. So, that is what that is the need of our. How is biology related to the engineering? Now, in an interdisciplinary area, the focusing is on what? The focusing is, is on the application of engineering principles to analyze the biological systems and to solve the problem in interfacing of such system that is plant, animal, and microbial with human design machines, structures, processes, and instrumentation. So 
there are the problems in the interfacing so to solve those problems engineer must know the biology and life science people must know the mathematical sciences and the physical sciences also so what are the different important applications of biology in engineering it is used to produce novel chemicals new medical imaging technologies portable and rapid disease diagnostic devices prosthetics biopharmaceutical tissue engineer organs solving environmental issues etc so these are what these are the various type of the applications of biology in engineering and engineering in biology you can say why so much so here now very important thing there is a question that can engineer generate idea or innovations from the biological specimen or it was happened in the previous history that engineers had generated the idea or innovation from the biological specimen yes the answer is yes now there are certain examples now if you look at the structure of a tree now structure of a tree it is a very important thing that is what it has got a stem and then the branches are there now the branches the, the stem it gives a proper support to the branches and there is no fracture or there is no collapse of what of the tree in what in a normal condition only and only if there is a mechanical destruction or mechanical hemorrhage on what on the tree or if there is a certain disease affect the tree it is it is a factor of stem or whatever it is now here the very important concept it is involved and what is that concept the concept of a constant and evenly distributed stress at the surface of what at the surface of biological structures can be accepted as what it can be accepted as a significant design rule for the animals and plants now this is a characteristic of a good mechanical design so since there can be no stress concentration as there is no stress concentration here so there is no fracture that can start as such from a point very easily now this particular thing it was noticed by the class matak a material scientist and specialist in fracture mechanics he attributed this particular <clears throat> he used this attribute to test the shapes of structures for particular loading situations for producing a structural shape optimization of engineering components for engineering purposes the optimum is to have a sufficient strength for all relevant loading cases by maintaining what maintaining a minimum of weight so this is what this is the engineering principle and that is observed in what there is observed in the structure of a tree now if you come to the cantilever beam the optimum shape for the joint of a cantilever beam students of civil engineering and faculty members of the civil engineering can understand this the optimum shape for the joint of a cantilever beam to a strut the contours the contours for the joint area were developed by engineer bod in 1934 which turned out to be different for compressive and tensile loads as such cross matak showed that the by bod curves which he has he had developed they are found in what they are found in many contexts in natural structures such as the branching trees and the antlers he developed the design of a novel thread form for the screws to fit or to fix the metal plates onto the bone from what from the fresh type of the natural resources so here another example can be given the robert lee recollis a french engineer an architect he developed the reticulated ceramic frameworks he took the inspiration from one particular type of the marine protozoa called as the radiaria and the radi this is what this is the uh, uh, picture of this radiaria uh, genus avec the specie calamitra so radiaria calamitra specie it gives what it such type of the reticulated structure and which is what which is very stiff and it is tight one so by using this particular concept with with, with rigorous logic he developed what he developed the structural principles with a research tool at university of pennsylvania in, in usa the structures resulting were stiff light durable yet made from minimum of basic units his target was as he said 
the structures of infinite string for the zero weight. He also studied the corrugated shells of what of the spot and the pectin, producing the stiff plates and the tube from the corrugated surfaces. So he used various type of the biological specimens, took the idea from that, and developed what developed so many such type of the structures. So another example, this is the picture. Now this picture you can see it is a <clears throat> it is the part of Olympic Stadium at Munich. And here you are observing this is what this is a tensile web. Now this tensile web designing it was done, it was created or it, it was created by taking the idea of what idea from a particular type of the uh, proto uh, a particular type of the creature. So what is that that you will see now? This particular structure it was developed by Free Otto at the Institute of Lightweight Structures at Stuttgart University. Now, for that, he prepared a group of biologists, engineers, and architects, and he took this idea from what from the certain type of spiders, the marine spiders, the water spiders, they are called as the Argyorene to Aquitaca. Aquitaca. They are preparing what they are preparing the tensile horizontal webs in a sub-aquatic region where they can they, they, could, they can sustain the hydraulic pressures retaining what the air space forward for the development of the eggs. So they are available in what in the biological field. Now how these particular tensile webs which are developed by this uh, spider can sustain with the hydraulic pressure that is what that is very really interesting. So the Frey Otto, he took this idea and developed that particular type of the tensile web of what of the Munich stadium, which is covering the entire stadium as such. And the same uh, idea or the uh, same uh, thing, it was used by another uh, engineer called Jacob Robbery. He designed a project for an underwater village to house 250 divers. You can see here underwater. These are what these are the tensile webs which are developed by what which are developed here. The divers can house very well, and 250 divers can be placed underwater in what in such, in such type of the webs. Again, the development of such web, this idea was also taken from the same type of the aquatic or the marine spider. So there are so many such examples that we can give. Another thing is that the nature. It is very good at designing the holes. All of you know the wood borer. The wood borer, it gives a nice type of the hole inside the wood. Now, that particular that particular preparation of hole and that particular thing, the designing of such type of the hole, it is used for what? It is used for the development of the front suspension of the Opel cars. So, there are numerous examples where engineers obtain idea from biological species for designing different structures and it gave a sustainable technology for the development. The entire world today wants sustainable development. So this is what this is. It. So we can say that here the engineers, they can generate the idea from nature. And if you know the biology or if you know certain type of the biological principles, you can develop a new type of the idea. Now here, we are going to see what are the different branches of engineering. They are what they are using, and they are they can use the biology principles as such. So the very first it is called is the mechanical engineering, the applications of biology in mechanical engineering. Now mechanics it is a part of mechanical engineering, and this is what this is an area of science dealing with what behavior of physical bodies under. The action of what under the action of a force comprised of statics, kinetics, and kinematics. Advances and research in applied mechanics has wide application in almost fields of study, including the medical sciences and the biology. The relationship between the mechanical engineering and the medicine and the biological science is established on its application in these two separate fields. So, some emergent mechanical techniques applied in the medical sciences and the practice can cite here so these are what the very important is the biomechanics so biomechanics it is 
that is increasingly recognized recogn being recognized as what the important application of mechanical fundamentals in, in the biomedical and biological sciences and the practices the bio biomechanics can play a crucial role in preventing the injury as well as performance enhancement of living systems now why does mechanics serve as a medical for the medical technologies and biological science this might be a question in the minds of students so if you look at the mechanical engineering mechanical engineering is a broad engineering object with a range of activities and functions that derive its breadth from what from the need to design and manufacture medical <coughs> technologies from small individual parts in order to do the work system that can be involved in almost on every aspect of the technology it covers the topic so biomechanics covers the topics related to energy fluid mechanics dynamics robotics solid mechanics heat transfer design manufacturing maintenance and control so this diverse background helps the mechanical engineer and scholars to define orient the future of technology and play critical role in solving what the global issues and challenges in of many areas of interest outside of outside of the mechanical technology now there is a need to go and think out of the box so medicines and biological sciences have been adopted by mechanical principles and theories such as the mechanical role such as the role in what in the orthopedics immunology absolute reliance of mass transport and difficulty equation in pharmacodynamics and the pharmacokinetics for understanding what for understanding the cardiovascular physiology and pathology particularly cardiovascular physiology this <coughs> biomechanics it has played an important role so this is what the cardiovascular physiology for example in the cardiovascular physiology when we go for heart surgeries open heart surgeries bypass surgeries at that time your body is placed on what on a machine that is called as the heart lung machine now that heart lung machine at that time take the function of heart as such and it is developed by what it is developed by the mechanical engineers by using what by using all these sciences that is the mechanics and the applied mechanics and so many other things so <laughs> here the application of biomechanics now applications of biomechanics are too much and <coughs> applications of mechanical principles in the study of organisms in what the kinematics and the kinetics in a view uh, in a view of the in a view of the uh, mechanical engineer how is your body human body it is nothing but with a collection of fibers made of bones which are moved by the muscles in the sport and exercise where the mechanics can be involved to analyze the performance of athletes based on their interaction with equipment so here suppose if we want to go for a knee joint replacement and preparation of for preparation of a knee joint so there the knee joint simulation it is given by what it is given by the mechanical engineers by using what by using a program that is called as the ansys so a simulation is given and the knee joint it has been developed so there how it can tolerate the stress of what the body the material how it can uh, uh, maintain the stress of body and then how a guide can be there there is a movement of leg that it, it can be carried out so everything it is simulated by using what by using the biomechanics so here we, you can see now this is what this is the uh, musculoskeletal this is the musculoskeletal model which is coupled with what coupled with the ansys program allows the simulation of the femoral stress during the guide then there is what there is this is what this is the dental uh, this is the denture where the viscoelastic uh, viscoelastic stress as such it is calculated and accordingly the partial denture it is what it is designed by using what by using ansys type of program and again here there is a role of what there is a role of the mechanical engineers because this involves what it involves the calculation of what the calculation of stress as such during what during the 
rehabilitation of rehabilitation of the danger using the certain type of the resilient type of the danger like which can tolerate a certain type of the pressure so this is what this is the application in the dentistry also now the applications of nano mechanics so application of nano mechanics now it was said in the in the in the introductory speeches uh, by vice chancellor and by dr deshmukh also the nano technology it is what it is going to be the future and here there is a uh, there is what there is a combination of nano mechanics there is a mechanical engineering at nano level so the novel techniques of nano mechanics which include the use of carbon nanotubes carbon nanotube application in what in the therapy in the dna recognition in immunology antiviral resistance and so on the nano robotics it is again the more advanced branch that combines with the new technology mechanics and new and the new type of the biomaterials to design and develop the nano robots which are based on bacteria and the biochips so the bacteria and biochips they are used to develop what is nano machines these nano scale robots can be involved in the biomedical applications particularly for the treatment of cancer cerebral aneurysm kidney stones removal of surgery treatment of pathology then the <coughs> uh, then the removal of the defected dna parts then some treatments of the uh, so these are what these are the various applications now such for such applications we need what we need the carbon nanotubules now the carbon nanotubules by the cnts they are used they are prepared for the from the carbon pure carbon and they are having the lengths as such in the few millimeters and nano diameters now particularly such type of the tubules they were used in what they were used in the aircrafts and certain other things but later on it was thought that why we should not use in the biomedical sciences or in the medical sciences in order to give what the certain type of the treatments as such now this is what this is the structure of the carbon nanotubule at the cnt now these are what these are the important applications now the cnt is they are having the exceptional electrical mechanical optical and the chemical properties the cnt is are used in the medicine and biology that is for application of carbon nanotubes in the path cancer therapy target drug delivery system long board cancer anti cancer systems application of carbon nanotubes in the cancer immunotherapy so there are so many type of what application of this carbon nanotubes so here also in the vaccines and so many applications are there the nanorobotics has been widely known as an emerging field by developing small machines and devices by using what by using the microorganisms and they are used in what they are used in the different type of the therapies also so the nanorobotics it is also there now another thing it is what it is the one particular area of the engineering that is what the computational fluid dynamics now what is this computational fluid dynamics the computational fluid dynamics it is a tool that contribute on the understanding of blood flows human organ that logical option such in the simulation the cfd is a engineering tool to connect the mechanics mathematics software programming to execute simulation performing how the fluid or the gas flows based on navier equations which are the main mathematical formulations in what in the fluid mechanics the cfd has around <coughs> since 20th of century they were used they were used in analyzing the air flows in the cars and in the aircraft in the machine and in the cooling system is uh, uh, devices now this here is they are used in in the medical uh, technology cfd use the software like ansys solid works and foam and adena how oh, they are play a important role in the medicine where doctors and researchers can create the virtual recognition and human organ options the blood flow systems combining the fluid dynamics terms in a simplified model of human such as the vascular and the system so 
it is a good example that is what during the heart surgery first of all the doctor or the surgeon he create what the virtual reconstruction of the heart and the such type of the arteries the coronary arteries where the actual operation should be done and then the joints to be given is the anastomosis so here this is what this is the uh, this is the cfd simulation uh, of the arterial microanastomosis this is the anatomy of what of the pedestal femoral artery now this is the one diagram view prior to the anastomizing now that is what is this is the view before the anastomizing this is the anatomy of the pedestal femoral artery and this is what this is the completed anastomosis in operation now this is possible because of what because of the cfd application otherwise the surgeons cannot do such type of the critical surgeries as such and this is what this is the cfd simulation of heart blood flow that how the coronary arteries they supply the blood to what to the heart itself and this gives what this gives a different type of technique and the angiography and then the operation of what operation of angiography angioplasty other things that is you can reconstruct recognize what are the blockages they are present in what in the heart so this is what this is the use of the cfd so there are the seven topics where the mechanics and medicine and biology can be interfaced so i'm not going to read all these here the this clearly indicate that the mechanical engineering with knowledge of biology can develop technologies to benefit of man and sustainable development. only thing is that knowledge is essential to the mechanical engineers so now what are the applications of biology in the environmental engineering environmental engineering is a part of civil engineering and all of you know that uh, on the 22nd of april uh, we celebrated the world earth day and today the earth is facing the problem of what the pollution now the pollution and another another thing is that the earth's fresh water system it is depleting now there are different challenges because of what because of the pollution given by the industries and so many other things so there are many type of what the chemical stressors toxins the pharmaceuticals the trace contaminants and dyes and so many other things they are giving what they are giving the problem in what problem in uh, problem of what problem of deteriorating the environment because of which the pollution is occurring then again it is giving what it is changing the global climate and so many other things so here <clears throat> uh, if you take the example of chemical industry which is giving different type of pollutants if i take the example of dye industry the dye industry it is creating a pollution that dye residues are produced they are generally the aromatic in nature and they are not easily removable so if the industrialist want to remove there are two treatment either physical chemical method or the biological method in a physical chemical method the 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 easiest way is what to run the effluent in a column of activated carbon which will absorb what which will absorb all these dyes and then the clear effluent will come out but again the problem is of what problem of the carbon which is enriched with what with this dye stuff where to throw that and how to destroy that that create the another problem so in such cases we have to take the help of what we have to take the help of the microbial transformations and construct such type of what such type of the effluent treatment plants where the microorganisms can be can be grown now growing of a microbial organism it is not very easy task we had to study the growth kinetics and accordingly we had to prepare the primary treatment secondary treatment and tertiary treatment plants if you go for the activated sludge so in that how the microorganism will grow a particular microorganism which will utilize this particular drug and dyes and convert them into the simpler forms so their growth kinetics must be known so according to the organism there must be the aeration rate should be adjusted there must be the inflow rate of the, the of the fluid it should be maintained 
and if it is not done again there will be what there is the problem that it may give rise to very large amount of the sludge accumulation or a very less amount of the sludge accumulation as such so the applications of environmental biotechnology encompasses all facets of water quality engineering including water supply water quality modeling pollution control process design of water and wastewater treatment operations so here these are what these are the areas where the biological applications can be given in collaboration with engineers so biological synthesis of nanoparticles reduction of methane emissions from landfill sites the new medical and uh, molecular techniques for characterization of organisms because the which type of organism is growing in that particular effluent treatment plant it must be known to engineer and its physiology must be known the biological filtration systems which use the microorganism so again the knowledge of microbes it is known it, it, it is necessary the next generation best water treatment plant utilizing the membrane bioreactors anaerobic biological treatments now analog anaerobic biological treatments they are more critical to handle because the anaerobic organism they have a different physiological character than that of the uh, uh, aerobic one so uh, engineers in my environmental engineers and civil engineers they must know the biology and microbiology the growth kinetics and the metabolism without which they cannot develop a right type of what right type of a design for the uh, effluent treatment plants and the stps so uh, this is what this gives the environmental engineers with knowledge of microbiology and biology can develop sustainable solutions and technologies for the mankind so the civil engineers and the environmental engineers they must also know the biology now the biology and the chemical engineering the chemical engineering principles apply widely in development of production of biologics various unit operations are typically involved in the production of biologics and specific fundamental principles associated with these operations now they must know the complexity of the proteins drugs and biological production which pose extraordinary challenges to the chemical engineers by operating the large scale plants so uh, design and development operation of these processes require the complete understanding and appreciation of and the intricacies of proteins life cycle of cell biological cycles as such the concept of traditional chemical engineering they are applied to design equipment and develop the processes that allow the modern day mass manufacture of biotechnology products large scale protein chemical biochemical manufacturing utilizes a series of unit operations which are governed by the chemical engineering principles to grow the cells produce product isolate them purify the product from the cell cultures and so on now there are different products which are produced chemical products for example if we have the solvents ethanol ethanol acetone butanol isopropanol organic acids like citric acid lactic acid glucuronic acid these are what these are the different acids they are produced polymers like uh, dextran xanthans they are produced therapeutics antibiotics and vitamin biomass because this biofertilizers proteins include the different type of enzymes antibodies antigens fuels methane bioethanol and hydrogen now all these products are produced by microorganisms in a liquid nutrient media with huge reactors called fermenters and that is nothing but the fermentation technology as such the growth parameters the, the growth patterns that is the growth kinetics of organisms they differ from organism to organism also the production kinetics also differ in the similar way as such so these processes in this process again the heat and mass transfer and the fluid dynamics also play an important role the designing of a reactor requires the knowledge of these factors in correlation with what the growth kinetics which is governed by the physiological characters of, of organism heat and mass transfer in the bio microbial processes is also governed by oxygen or the gas transfer or the gas flow and the fluid dynamics because of because of microbial characters thus a chemical engineer must have an understanding of biological and microbiological systems in fact the bio, bio reactor designing and the bio, bio process designing 
it requires the knowledge of chemical engineering mechanical engineering and micro build technology as such so here uh, these are what these are so because of that the chemical engineers they must know the biology as such because the fermentation technology and the bioprocess engineering it is the part and parcel of chemical engineering nowadays then there are applications of biology in metallurgy and mining also the microbial leaching these are the processes of extracting metals and metals from their ores with the use of microorganisms now this method is used to recover many different precious metals like copper lead zinc gold silver nickel and so on the bacterial leaching extraction of metals from their ores by using microorganism it is attempted microbial technology offers a good economic alternative for mining industry at a time of when high grade minerals or resources they are depleted now if you take the example of the copper the copper production the bio leaching of the copper the bio leaching of the copper it is practiced in many countries like australia canada chile mexico peru russia and united states of america copper recovery from bio leaching accounts for about 25% of the total world copper production so the bio leaching and the application of microbial or organism in the metallurgy it is of utmost importance now this is what this is a view of what a copper mine it is a malanchkand copper mine of hindustan copper limiteds in madhya pradesh which is very nearer to my place there is nagpur this is the hip leaching which is attempted and here the copper is copper ore it is leached with the help of what with the help of microorganism the bio leaching of uranium is also possible by using the acido thiobacillus peroxidans it doesn't give the direct it doesn't give the <coughs> direct interaction with the uranium mineral but it gives the interaction indirect type of what indirect type of mechanism for uranium leaching then bio liberation of gold the iron and sulfur oxidizing acidophilic bacteria are able to oxidize the sulfur sulfur sulfidic ores containing encapsulated particles of elemental gold resulting in improved accessibility to the gold as such the bio oxidation of gold uh, ores is less costly less polluting alternative to the oxidative pre treatment such as roasting and pressure oxidation which require more energies so this is what this is the bio reactor in the hatti gold mines of karnataka where the bio leaching of the gold it is attempted and it is going on as such now the bacterial leaching is a revolutionary technique now it can replace the traditional methods of extraction such as the roasting and smelting which are energy expensive now bacterial leaching is possible with low concentrations and requires little energy inputs so where the low concentration of metal is there in the ore that can also be extracted the process is environmentally friendly eco friendly and it gives the sustainable technology and gives the extraction yield over 90% so this is what this is the efficiency of the microbial leaching so the metallurgical engineer can use this microbial technology for the ore leaching also now a number of companies are there these are the examples of the of the companies the gold field uh, limited mexico for the copper bhp billion limited northern chile backtech environment mexico and the other companies are there which are performing this bio leaching as such so applications in the petroleum technology so in the petroleum technology also the life science and the microbial science plays an important role the problem in the petroleum technology is that there is a unrecovered oil during what during the primary and secondary oil production processes so the methods are developed that is called as the enhanced oil recovery process now this enhanced oil recovery process it is coupled with what the microbial enhanced oil recovery process that is neor so this neor it become a promising one so what are the advantages of this neor it increases the productivity of oil field it increases the total oil produce and a more efficient operation of wells and oil fields increase 
of the viscosity of the formation water due to upsurge of biomass concentration and the microorganisms by metabolic products such as the soluble biopolymers and so many other things which reduces the mobility of formation water within the formation rock so because of that the oil is recoverable it is not lost so <clears throat> the mur it is less expensive so <clears throat> it is low energy input required process reduce uh, in the operations of downtime and it is eco friendly process as such so there are applications of microbial technology and the biology in the petroleum recovery and in the petroleum industry also or in the petroleum technology also so in terms of the quality of the oil produced by such technology it gives it increases the light alkenes that is less than c20 reduction of average content of c20 c40 alkenes biodegradation of uh, hydrocarbons splitting of aromatic ring splitting of phenolic ring emulsification of crude oil that can easily mobilize in the production well so there is no loss there is no loss of the uh, petroleum during the secondary primary and secondary productions so this meor it is eco friendly and it gives a more yield so the application of microbial organisms and the biology it is also equally important in what in the petroleum technology to have the sustainable development as such now in the biomedical instrumentation the biomedical instrumentation it is what it focuses on the device of what device of mechanics used to measure and evaluate the biological system it focuses the use of multiple sensors to monitor physiological characteristics of a human and animal bio instrumentation is a new and upcoming upcoming field concentrating on treating of diseases bridging together the engineering and medical worlds so majority of the innovations they have been they have come in last 15 to 20 years bio instrumentation has revolutionized the medical field and has made the treating patients much easier the instrument and the sensors they convert the signal from the body into the electrical signals there are there are many <coughs> sub areas or the sub fields within the bio instrumentation they include the creation of sensors genetic testing and drug delivery as such now the other fields of engineering such as electrical engineering and the computer science are related to the bio instrumentation in what in the circuits and creation of sensors like glucometers all of you know the glucometers which are used in the detection of blood sugar glucose where a reaction is carried out on what on a paper strip which carry the enzyme so that enzyme create certain type of oxidants or redox potential which is detected by the electronic circuit and it is displayed on what on the readout so that is what such type of the circuits they are created by the electronic engineers and the enzymes and other things they were developed by the microbiologist so the fitness trackers biomedical optics genetic testing drug delivery in agriculture imaging systems and so on so this is what this is the use of biomedical or this is the development of biomedical instrumentation where the engineering and biology play together now initiatives by institutes for interdisciplinary approach in india the initiatives to develop such technology by taking interdisciplinary approach to develop novel products for betterment of mankind has been taken by some institutes to give the example it is of indian institute of technology bombay it has developed a center that is called as the betic betic it is the biomedical engineering technology incubation center which was established in 2014 at iit bombay to bring doctors researchers entrepreneurs investors together for medical devices innovation the initiatives supported by rajiv gandhi science and technology commission of maharashtra department of science and technology new delhi the two satellite centers by iit bombay they have been established at college of engineering pune and vishveshwarya national institute of technology at nagpur with along with what along with the four other engineering colleges and seven medical colleges as such so this is what this is a large network which has been developed in the maharashtra so here in last 5 years the betic team members they gather 
over 400 unmet clinical needs from different hospitals, develop the proof of concept of 200 different medical devices in close collaboration with doctors and filed 55 patents. Of these, 25 products have been developed which include the screening and diagnostic devices, surgical instruments, etc., implants, prostates, and assistive devices. The team members incubated 15 startup companies. So they have developed the 15 startup companies <coughs> licensed with five products to the industry. So this is what, now here you can see the in the red uh, color, it is the name of company or it is a startup company and in the blue it is what it is the industry partner and these are what these are the products which are developed by this particular startup companies under the betting so this is what this is the initiative and now such startup companies young engineers and biologists they are coming together and developing different type of the things like glaucoma screeners then the uh, nasal and dental implants uh, as such so these are what these are the various things, the diabetic food screener, then apart from that, the laparoscopy instruments and so many other things. This is the prosthetic leg which has been developed and so on. So the biology <coughs> as such, it is related with mechanical engineering, civil engineering, environmental engineering, chemical engineering, metallurgy and mining, biomedical instrumentation, in collaboration with electrical engineering, electronics, computer science, and information technology, and so on. So there are so many types of the branches and so many types of the avenues, they are open. If the biology and engineering uh, fields, they come together, they can develop the novel products and give a better development as such, and, and we can solve the challenges of the world, either in the health, environment, industry and so on. So in conclusion, there is a need of the inclusion of interdisciplinary modules in the curriculum of various disciplines like biology and engineering or mathematics or physical science in biology. This will give a momentum to innovation, development of sustainable technologies, development of eco-friendly technologies, betterment of mankind, new avenues for business or the job help for economic development, a step to achieve the goal of Atmanirbhar Bharat. So with this, I conclude. Thank you for listening my words. Thank you. Questions from the participants? Can we ask the question, sir? Yeah, definitely. Here is the sure. first question. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yeah. Okay. So first question is, what is the role of ethics for biology teachers and students? Role of? I, I repeat, what is the role of ethics for biology <laughs> teachers and students? Role of ethics. Role of ethics. Yes, ethical, ethical committee is there. Yeah, ethics, ethical committee is there. And uh, e e even in the biotechnology, uh, there is a separate uh, issue that bioethics that we uh, we teach also. So, for example, if we want to ca ca carry over the recombinant DNA technology experiments and all that, so we have to maintain certain type of the ethics because of the performance <laughs> experiment and development of such technology, there should not be harm to the human being or to the environment. So, there are certain regulations that we have to follow. So, ethical committee is there which clears all these things and then we can go for such product. Yes, I would like to add one more thing. Uh, suppose the gene from animal is transferred in banana. Now understand again, I'm telling. Gene from animal is transferred to banana. Now, according to ethics, we eat banana for fasting. Now, banana is a vegetarian or non-vegetarian. It comes under ethical committee. Understand? Many issues are there for ethical. Ethics in biology and biotechnology. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, 
सर आर वी एन इन एरा दैट वेयर वी कैन कनेक्ट बायोटेक्नोलॉजी और बायोलॉजी टू रिलीजन आई थिंक वी आर फार अहर्ड नाउ and we need not to focus on such things we need for go to go for development and as far as i think yeah on, one who has got strong ethics only can teach bio at a secondary senior secondary college or any other level i don't think religious sentiments are to be attached with such conceptual things i'm i'm telling you what is given in the book in the biotechnology under ethical issues in biotechnology Yes, sir. I have also read it, and I also teach the same. But sometimes I feel it is redundant to teach it okay. now when we have opinion. gone so ahead, so very ahead correct. in the field. Very correct. Very correct. Yes, it is your opinion. I, I I respect your opinion, but these issues are given in biotechnology books under ethical issues. Okay. So the next question is from uh, Himanshi Bordol Bordoloi. Sir, if we take data from NCBI, do we hmm. need to take permission from the ethical committee? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You can you can take the data, but if you want to use that data for what purpose you are using, that you have to disclose. That is what that is important. your purpose of using that particular data it must be clearly mentioned okay, sir the next question is can we apply statistical method for this yeah statistical methods are very much important in any uh, development of what development of a drug or whatever it may be so bio statistics it plays an important role unfortunately in many universities the bio statistics is still neglected even i uh, go further there must be the mathematical modeling the mathematical modeling of biological processes it is required we are lacking in that whereas in the uh, other countries the mathematical modeling it is also given for every system and because of that they actually give the uh, particular type of the a uh, process which can be executed in a very proper manner so mathematical modeling then the bio statistics the statistical uh, information it is very very important uh, the next question is how as a faculty member we can uh, motivate students to take biology at 11 and 12 since they tend to have to go for vocational courses yeah yeah that, that that is that is that is the pro- that is the problem that is the problem uh, uh, in fact in fact what happened uh, there are certain type of the, the certain type of the uh, uh, misconceptions they are given in the mind uh, at lower level and the lower classes that is what if you want to do engineering you should leave the biology this is what this is given this is given by many of the teachers and that create a problem so actually that is the drawback of this system when we have introduced the such type of vocational courses that is of electronics new biology and like that so that has created a certain type of what certain type of the uh, uh, what you call the problem because we also face this problem uh, in what in the higher levels whenever we teach the fermentation technology particularly in the biotechnology courses when the fermenter designing occur and when we go for giving the uh, dynamics of the fermentation then the heat and mass transfer problems in the fermenter so at that time the students they were very reluctant to study that because there are lot of uh, mathematical calculations and other other things are there so uh, this is what this is required then there is a part of bioenergetic where the thermodynamics is involved so there also the students are reluctant this is because the student they left the mathematics they are not uh, liking the subjects like thermodynamics and the physical sciences so there is a great need that the counseling should be done at the lower level that it is not so hard and what uh, particular advantage you will get because uh, many more engineers i know there are certain examples the students they left the biology and after 
their retake or like that they enter into into a such a field in mtech or further they wanted that the biology must be known so this is what this is the problem so that's why it is very much necessary that biology people must know the mathematics and uh, engineering students they must know the biology nowadays because it is what it is revolutionizing the technology so there should not be any such compartmentalization <laughs> next question is what about metallurgical science versus life science in metallurgy metal in metallurgy also leaching the leaching hello 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 yes sir yes sir uh, a good afternoon i am dr shobhrat kumar devnath from kolkata May I ask you a uh, one or two question, please? Yeah. Uh, regarding the recent coronavirus, may I ask you uh, what what country is the source of uh, uh, present in coronavirus? Question number one. Question what? number two is what country? Wh which country is the source of uh, uh, the present uh, novel coronavirus nineteen? Ah, oh. that is my first question. Okay. the second question is is this virus a natural uh, product or a man made uh, uh, this sir, is my second question please thank you very much uh, both the questions are uh, are so tricky and they are <laughs> they are uh, uh, very difficult to say because okay. we we uh, cannot, sir, we, we, cannot sir, comment, we cannot sir, comment on such a forum That's okay all right sir said, uh, 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 we being a uh, academician Uh, being an academician, I am asking the question because a scientific it is a scientific question. Yeah. Uh, we need not to for find out any consequences or uh, any whatever thing because we are academician. We want to find the academician as a research orientation uh, is as a research uh, thing, and this research should be done for the benefit of society and humankind of the universe. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Sir, the next question is: um, Is a biology student is able to study biochemical instrumentation course? Yeah, That's definitely. Doctor Anil Kumar. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Any other questions? Okay. Now I request uh, Devashree Bhattacharya to propose the vote of thanks. Over to you, Devashree. Good afternoon, everyone. As all good things come to an end in life, so is the webinar. First of all, I would like to thank Almighty for making this webinar a grand success. On behalf of Assam Don Bosco University, I take this opportunity to extend my heartiest thanks. to our honorable chief guest dr arvind deshmukh and our respected resource person dr sanjeev d patankar we are really enlightened with your knowledge and presence thank you sir for enlightening us with your inspiring and motivating words uh, my chat box in i mean in google meet chat box is full of appreciation for speaker for chief guest and as well as for our university so i would like to extend my thanks from on behalf of participants to our speaker chief guest and our vice chancellor rev dr stephen madley we are also thankful to our honorable vice chancellor rev dr stephen madley for his continuous motivation i would also like to thank our director professor manoranjan kalita for his enthusiastic support I would also extend my gratitude to our head of the department Dr. Hemant Bharali sir for his continuous support. A special thanks to the organizing committee, teaching and non-teaching staff for their continuous support and coordination. Our heartfelt thanks to all our participants for joining us this webinar. Hope you all are benefited from this webinar. With these warm words and a kind message we move to the end of today's webinar. Thank you so much, everyone. These certificates will be uh, given to the participants who have filled the feedback form. It will take four days. 
so thank you so much once again for making this event a great success thank you thank you uh, thank you ma'am may i ask you one question please uh, time ma'am yeah uh, uh, i think uh, you have told by i i missed that uh, shall all the participants get the certificates sorry uh, shall we get the uh, participation certificates yes yes definitely we will get the participation certificate after you fill the feedback form Yes, so I yes, uh, I have done the feedback. Uh, then, uh, 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 is the certificate will be sent through the mail? Uh, yeah, I will send certificate okay, okay, both. Okay, via okay. Thank mail you very much. Thank you. It is a nice uh, and uh, very useful webinar. And uh, my suggestion is, uh, we shall be in contact even after the completion of the webinar. And we, I particularly from the uh, uh, being a, a part of a participant, I want that uh, regular, uh, this kind of regular webinar uh, should be uh, done. And we, uh, we, I, we have uh, very much uh, uh, enriched uh, and enjoyed the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you. All. Thank you. Thank you, you much, sir. sir, for your kind words. Thank you, everyone. We have come to an end to, uh, of today's brief webinar. Uh, thank yes. you, dear participants, for uh, joining us this morning. We uh, and I wish you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.